Welcome back everybody to another Kevin's Creations here on Geektopia Island. I'm Kevin. I'm Cardinal. And today we're showing a new deck and it's another one of those crazy decks that we got to show off. We got to get it over we with. We have to. But it is, it is Loki and judgmenting into a perfect Loki. Yeah. I mean that, that's, that's really that's what she judgments into now. Doing. But before we get into that guys, we just wanted to remind everybody that we do have a Patreon. And it is just a dollar to give us some extra love and support, and we would greatly appreciate all the help you would give us. You can check out extra new deck techs early, you can check out all the other fun stuff we get, Discord, all that fun stuff is in there down below. With that, let's get into the deck that I like to call Graveyard Dogs. Mm -hmm. So, like I was saying, we're doing Loki, you know, good old girl. So she judgments for two blue and one, Divinity to ten, and drives the blue. And when she judgments, she normally judgments into an 8-12. You pay two less to, for the awakening cost of spells you control. But. 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 New perfect Loki is crazy. Yeah. So she is a resonator, the perfect Loki in the deck. But she has a statement that says, as long as your J ruler is in the field, if it's perfect Loki, the witch of chaos, and you spent a black to do judgment, you may reveal this card from your hand and put it into the field on top of your J ruler. If you do, this card becomes a J ruler and it gains imperishable divinity infinity. Enter equals enter, look at the top ten of your deck, put one from among them into your hand, and the rest go into the graveyard. And once per turn, you may play a card from your graveyard. That's a lot of stuff that's, that she does. That's a lot of overpowered For BS. All that you have to do is pay a blue, blue, and a black. That's it. To judgment. That's it. And there's extra ways to pay black, so it's really not that difficult to do. And it has quick cast. Yeah. Otherwise, Perfect Loki is a blue black and for an eight one with quick cast. This card gets plus oh plus one for each creature in your grave for each card in your graveyard. And then enter J resonators your opponent's control get minus zero minus X, where X is the number of cards in your graveyard. Which will be ten when you do that judgment. Yeah. She's kind of bonkers. But when she does all that, it it just gets kind of out of hand. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> um Really, she just makes your stuff... She just gets to play dudes every yeah. turn. Play a thing for free, because I can't... Not free, but you still have to play for it, but whatever. She basically wins the game when you <laughs> yeah. take three mana, and that's it. Yeah. Alright, so her runes. We have, essentially, Divinity 10 without her judgmenting into Divinity Infinite. Yeah. And then we have the Divinity Infinite. So first off, we have Harvesting Season to help set up for the graveyard. It is a black and one Divinity 3 chant rune. You pay one less to play this from a rune area. Put the top 10 cards of your deck into your graveyard. Awesome. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah. And then next up, I have Petrification, which is two blue. Resonators your opponent's control don't recover during their controller's next recovery phase. Essentially, you're playing a semi-control slow deck. Semi. So you're wanting semi. to make sure you control how they do things. So you're like, hey, don't untap here. And now I'm going to swing in your dudes or I need to keep you tapped down so I can kill your stuff next turn with the perfect Loki. Next up is Reconnaissance, which hasn't seen a lot of play, but it is one blue, Divinity 2, 4C3. Look at the top three, put one in, put any number on top in any order, put the rest in the bottom, and then you draw a card. So essentially one blue, look at the top three, draw a card. Pretty good. <laughs> I'll take it. And then we got the Returnee of God. It is a blue and three, Divinity 2. You pay two less to play this card if your J ruler is Loki or Loki the Witching Queen, or the Witch of Chaos. Look at the top seven of your deck. You put a Resonator with total cost extra less from among them in the field where X is the number of magic stones you control. Put the rest on the bottom of your deck in a random order. So, with this card, you wanna make sure that you play this before you judgment into Perfect Loki. Because if it is Perfect Loki, you can't play this card. Yeah. Because it is not a Loki or Loki the Witch of Chaos. So it's kind of a catch-22. But for two mana to be able to get almost any dude, it's too good to not use. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the fact there's also the other Master Master rune. <laughs> the rune the Master of them all. And her new Master rune, or not Master rune, it's but a new chant but... rune is Neo Ragnarok. It is two blue and seven, Divinity Infinite. You pay seven less to play this card from a rune area. So two mana... You may put any number of giant resonators with different names from outside the game into your field. Just straight on, just straight there. Just great. Plop you them down. You don't have to cast them, nope. you don't have to pay for them. Nope. Just two mana, I get all the dudes. They're not even bogging your deck down. 
Yeah, no. They're outside the game. Yeah, so they're outside the game, so they're essentially in your sideboard, and you're just like, cool, put these dudes into play. Thanks. And I'm going to go over the dudes real quick, just so we know. So so how much power you're going to have on the field to yeah. win next turn? Yeah. And so the first one we got is Agarda, Loki, the Giant of Darkness. It is three black and four for a 12-8 with Bane and Barrier. Total cost four or less. They all have Barrier to four or less. And they each have an injury trigger. Enter for him is destroy target J Resonator. Your opponent discards a card. You lose 400 life. Good. Solid. Good. Thanks. Next up is Angroba, the Giant of the Setting Sun. She has three white and four for a 14-17. Barry 4, enter, destroy target, rested J Resonator, or addition, you gain 1,000 life. So she negates the other one because you gain life. Yeah. And kill things. It's just silly. Next up is Burgomeyer, the Giant of Eternal Ice, 1116 for 7 mana. Barrier 4 or less, you may rest target J Resonator. It doesn't recover during its controller's next recovery phase. Look at the top four of your deck. Put any number of them into the graveyard, put the rest on top of your deck in any order, draw a card. Ooh, that helps more. It just does so much. We're just we're just getting crazy with all yeah, these dudes. Yeah. Next up is Surter the Explosion Giant. He is 7 for an 18-12 with Swiftness and Barrier 4 or less. Enter, put two Fire Moon Resonations into the field, then this card deals 400 damage multiplied by the number of Moon Additions to target J Resonator. So all of these dudes take care of resonators in some way or form or fashion. But it's just swinging because they're so yeah, big. But just coming into play and being like, I'm big. Next up is Tro, the Giant of Destruction. He has seven mana for a 10-18. He, whenever he blocks, you recover him. He's got barrier four or less. And enter, put the top card of your magic stone deck into the field rested. Search your deck for a resonator with total cost of one. Reveal it and put it into your hand. Oof. So... If you get to do Perfect Loki and then Neo Ragnarok, you just put like so much 60 power. something power in play. Yeah, yeah. Just to be like, uh, good luck. Like, they have to answer all five of those dudes do that have, turn. Do you have a board wipe? And it can't be Final Battle because it'll kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. Even if it was not. If it was Wonder or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's kind of ridiculous how much damage like you can put into play really quickly with this deck. That is it for the runes and the side deck that you go get. We're going to delve into the actual deck and see what there is for it. Okay. Of course, as all decks will now have nowadays, we have our uh, one drop here. Shadow of Kronos, 4-4. Four, four. It has barrier, which is really nice. All right. Treat water magic stones as you control a darkness magic stone, of course. Uh, water magic stones, tap for a darkness. And then tap. Look at the top card of your deck. You may put it into the graveyard if you want to. Yeah. He's so good. And there's some times when you wanna, for sure. Next one, Freya Royal Palace. It's a one drop, zero two. This card gains plus zero plus four as long as you control another machine, which if you have two of them, that's the only way. If you would draw a card during your draw phase, you may look at it at top two instead, and then you choose one, put one in the graveyard and one in your hand, which is super powerful. Yeah. Early game. And of course, talked about good old perfect Loki already as a creature. But, Rebellious Soul A.U. Kevin, one drop, uh, two drop, one blue, one, six, six. It has flying, which is really good. When this card enters the field, gain control of target resonator with total one or and as long as you control her. Now tell us why would we want to do that. So, at the moment, until she rotates, this card is amazing right now to stop all of the little one drop dudes that are mana dorks. Yeah. And by that I mean the ones that say your mountain, your stones turn into a different color. Mm -hmm. The only one she can't deal with is the one guy we just talked about that we played because he's got barrier. Yep. But otherwise she's just like, cool, that's mine now. So you need all that mana production or that, that other color production, you don't have it until you answer my 6-6. My six, six. And it just shuts them down out of a color, even for like a turn or two, and it, that can be game breaking in this format right Yeah, now. that could really change up the way they're trying to play for sure. Yeah, it definitely changes everything. So next up is Fenrir, the final form, and he's our big hitter, or one of our the big hitters. Yeah, and he is right? six mana for a 12 12 flying. When this card is put into a graveyard from your deck, put it into your hand. If your J ruler is perfect Loki, put this card into your field instead. And then you can remove this card from your hand from the game, produce a black, spin this wheel only to do judgment cards of cards named Loki. So therefore, therefore you get the Loki, perfect Loki in there. Yeah, so you can judgment on turn two if you really, really want to, mm -hmm. to get the perfect Loki, 
but mostly this dude's to just be like, hey, Freelo, I have Fenrir's. Because Perfect Loki puts him in the graveyard, so you get Fenrir. Yep. Freya puts it in the graveyard, so you get a Fenrir. The Shadow of Kronos puts it in the <laughs> graveyard, so you can get a Fenrir. Harvesting Season can put all of them into play, because it mills 10 if you have a Perfect Loki flip. So you're just like, ah, yeah. cool, do things, get Fenrir's. Let's, let's go. And I mean that's twelve damage in flying. So that's just difficult that's, to deal with. It's just yeah, just more of a giant hitter for sure. <laughs> yeah. And of course we have a. Oh yeah, go ahead. Next up is Burgomeyer. We talked about him, Giant of Eternal Ice. I have a couple on the main board just because they're good and they have a discard effect, which is essentially the same as their enter effect. So you can discard this card. You may rest the target J Resonator. It doesn't recover, and then you look for the top four and put any number of them in the graveyard. So if you this dude goes and allows you to get Fenrir's put in the middle graveyard as well, so that way you can put them into play. Yep. And of course the next one, we also have the, the Black Giant here, uh, Garda, and basically the same thing, but the the discard one is, of course, destroy target J Resident Air opponent, discards a card, you lose 400. Yeah. So just super good. Yeah, the game. They're there just to be like your extra bombs if you need them in the main board, if you don't get to Ragnarok. Yeah. All right, and we'll go into the spells that will help you for sure. Now everything going in the graveyard, you kind of want to pick up your spells. So spinning Aquasol, one blue quick cast, put target champ from your graveyard to your hand. It's just super solid. I'm going to be so sad when that card rotates because yeah. it's so good. Me too. I, I quite enjoyed it for <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah. Next one, of course, the only one that can trigger off a normal Loki flip, which will never happen, <laughs> Arendite, the Nitrous Blade. One blue quick cast, cancel target automatic ability of a resonator. If this card was awakened, destroy that resonator instead, which is three more mana. Next up is March of the Dead. So for your harvesting season and any, any way your dudes die, you just get them back. Mm -hmm. It is one black, put target resonator with total cost two or less from the graveyard into the field. Put a second one in if it's awakened for two more black. So all of your little one drop dudes... Or it's really cute to be like, cool, I need a Loki just in just free low. So you're like, cool, put Loki into play. Your dudes get minus 0, minus 100 for each card in my graveyard. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. The, the best thing with it is you can return her to play, bounce it in your hand with another card, and then judgment to be like, ah, perfect Loki. Cool, great. Woo. Yep. Fantastic. Because we need to cheat. That, that's, that's what it feels like. And with that card of said, <laughs> said bouncing is Shayla's return. One blue quick cast. Return target resonator with total cost four or less to the owner's hand. Simple as that. Yeah. So it, that's mostly there to help you get the perfect Lokis in your hand, so that way when you do judgment, you're are, you're guaranteed to have the perfect Loki set up. Yeah. Exactly. And then the card that we have that I I will always like, and it grows on me more and more, is the Last Thunder. So three blue. This card gains quickness as long as it's in your hand in the weather thunderstorm. Don't care. No, yeah. Search your deck, hand, or graveyard for three cards named The Last Thunder. Remove them from the game. If you do, destroy all non-Magic Stone, non j Ruler entities. If you search your deck, shuffle it. Yeah. This is here for two reasons. A, it's just a really good kill spell for all the do all the dudes. And B, if you're playing against the Loki deck and they Neo Ragnarok, then you're like, cool, <laughs> let's kill the board. Yeah. Let's show them what a true Ragnarok means. Yeah, you're just like, oh, you got barrier? I don't care. Yeah. You're dying because I wiped the board clean. And it's it's just a really good card to set that just reset your game. It really is. like, And once you play against it, like first game and you see it, you're like, well, I got to play against this <laughs> the whole other time. Yeah, yeah. The rest of the time, they're just like, oh, I have to make sure I play around that because they will always have one. Exactly. And with Spinning Aqua Soul, you can get it back at any time. So you're just like, I don't care if you mill it. Right? Cool. Then get it back. And then cast it, and then done. Because you only need one. You just gotta get one and find the other three. Yeah. So, but that is it, guys, for the Graveyard Dogs deck. It is gonna be super fun to play. It's gonna be a little crazy. So, bear with us. We're, we're figuring it out. Yeah. But Perfect Loki is gonna be a thing to deal with right now in, in the New Frontiers format. So, uh, be ready for that. And sad, sad for us, but happy for everyone else. Hopefully, it gets banned by then. <laughs> this video comes out, and we hope so. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us here on Geektopia Island, and we'll see y'all again next time. Goodbye. Also, guys, we just remind y'all to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and if you want to keep up to date on all the future content, make sure you click that bell. It'll give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. 
Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. We love you.